Uh, good evening. This meeting of the Eastland Planning Commission is now being called to order. Uh, my name is Brian Schick. I'm the chairman. Uh, I'd like each commission member to introduce yourself briefly. Just Peter so Lynch. Me. Kirk Scott. Rita Palazzo. John Bankson. Brenda Henderson. And please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. As this is a regular, regularly scheduled meeting of the Planning Commission, uh, we have a call for additions to the agenda. Uh, I'd like a motion to add to our agenda um, after reports uh, the filling of our alternate vacancies. So moved. Uh, there's a motion from Joan. Do second. I second from Ms. Palazzo? Any discussion? Uh, we, had, we had received a letter of interest from uh, Sammy, who has been an uh, alternate in the past. Uh, all those in favor of adding him to the agenda, adding the filling of vacancies to the agenda after reports, say aye. 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 Unanimous. Uh, first item of business is the call for public delegations. Public delegations is a time when members of the public are invited to speak to the commission about certain matters. Issues or concerns related to approved subdivisions under construction and in-house proposals or general topics of discussion are open to comment. Items, referrals, or applications subject to a decision by the commission, public hearing, or in litigation may not be discussed. During public delegations, members of the commission will not directly answer questions or make comment. Is anyone here this evening to speak to us under the public delegations? Going twice. Very well. Brings us to reports. Uh, under communications, uh, Mr. Gaishel had laid out some uh, correspondence that the Planning Commission has received. Uh, I don't think it's anything we need to act on this evening. <coughs> So in the spirit of moving things along, we'll move next to our zoning representative. Uh, was anyone present at the most recent zoning meeting? No? I'm not next week. Okay. Uh, that brings us to our ex officio, Ms. Cheeseman. How are you doing, Holly? I'm well, thanks. How are you? Very well, thank you. questions uh, that brings us to our subcommittees we have a sustainable development and climate climate adaptation subcommittee and a walkability subcommittee uh, mr. Gaishel usually <coughs> briefs us on those uh, committees does anyone have any comments or questions about our subcommittees anything to report very well uh, I'm my chairman comments I'm going to pass uh, it brings us to the approval of minutes in your packets, you'll find the June 7th regular meeting minutes. I'm looking for a motion to approve those minutes. I make a motion oh, to approve okay. the minutes uh, of June 7th. I have a question. Uh, go ahead. On the POCD, I thought the due date was 2019, not 2020. Uh, good, good point. What page are you on? Um, three. <coughs> Down at the bottom. Mr. Uh, Chairman, could I comment on that? Sure. If, if I recall, uh, it is 2020, but he wanted it all in place by 2019. Okay. 
so because it takes a while because I worked on the previous ones and he was going to give us an outline okay. each, each step of the way so that we could complete it. Okay. I just wondered. Yep. I think uh, John's clarification is correct. Uh, I've heard a motion to approve. I'm moving for a second. Second. Second from Mr. Lynch. Is there any further adjustments or comments? Questions? To approve the minutes, all those in favor say aye. 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 That's our unanimous. Uh, it brings us to our subdivisions, which as Mr. Gaishal, our town planner, is absent this evening, we'll skip. There are no zoning referrals, which brings us to the main event. Uh, oh, wait, I'm sorry. I, I skipped right by adding Sammy to <laughs> the... Uh, <laughs> Sammy's there. Uh, we'll take the uh, order of business of filling our alternate vacancies now. So uh, the process so far has been that um, Sammy has submitted a letter of interest to the town planner. Uh, he's asked me to add it to our agenda. Uh, our next step would be a motion to um, assign Sammy to the alternate position. And make a motion to assign Sammy to the commission. Do, do I have a second? second? A second. second. Second for Mr. Scott. Uh, discussion I have a question sure. did he, you have to write a resume I thought I heard that it has to be a resume uh, I did not review what he submitted to Mr. Gaishal but uh, please. I submitted a uh, resume two years ago okay. and, uh, from what I understand it's still on file and they said that I wouldn't have to send that again. oh okay so because I beautiful. do know it has been enforced and I just wanted to make sure everything was in order Thank you. And uh, Sammy served a few years ago as an alternate, mm -hmm. and uh, we had a good time. Yeah. Looking forward to pick that back up again. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Very well. Thank you. Uh, and welcome aboard again. Uh, that brings us back to... That brings us to our main event. Sorry. The municipal referrals, application of Town of East Lyme for special permit for a proposed amphitheater at property identified in the application as McCook Point Park, 8 Atlantic Avenue, Niantic. For your information, the East Lyme Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on 7 July, 7.30 p.m. at the East Lyme Town Hall. Uh, Before we act on this? I mean, what if we don't act on this? Uh, I... It's already on their agenda. If we were to not act on this, I believe uh, we would miss our opportunity to comment on it, and zoning could make their decision, uh, assuming that we were in favor of it, I think. If Why are they pushing this? I, that's a good question, and Mr. Putnam is here this evening to talk about it. Well, I was told Mr. Goschel, or Keith excuse yep. me, yep. told me it needed an 824, am I right? 824 right. 824 review by the Planning Commission because it's an improvement to a town park. Exactly. So oh, I have some information. I can yep. get to if that's appropriate or not. Whatever. Sure. Mm -hmm. So there is a committee that's been set up um, that consists of uh, members of the Niantic Rotary Club, the Lions Club, East Line Public Trust, uh, and the Parks and Recreation Commission. Um, this idea came about a couple of years ago. It's been in the town's capital improvement budget for the last two or three years. We're getting to the point now where we have raised $60,000 from those three organizations, the Lions, the Rotary, and East Line Public Trust, while well, donating $20,000 to the project. And this is a seasonal project. I don't understand the question. Uh, no, I'm just saying this is seasonal, this yes. building. Yeah, well, it would be good to have winter concerts out, I guess, but yeah, it would be... Okay, no, outdoor, no, I yeah, just, because, uh, you know, I didn't realize that this was happening so quickly. And that, you know, the Planning Commission really doesn't have that much time to digest everything. We, if they're having a public hearing, we've got to quick come up with an answer. Our planning chairman is not here. I have several questions coming up when you're finished 
And I'm just a little confused and concerned. This is going a little bit too fast. Uh, perhaps you could begin with uh, when, it, when it was identified sure. as a capital improvement. Yeah, it was probably three years ago. It was placed in a capital improvement budget for $75,000. So with that, I talked to Eastline Public Trust, Mr. Hoy. They were interested in putting their monies towards a project, a town mm -hmm. community project. Our committee's been meeting for probably about a year now. Um, and I mentioned the members of the committee, and they're listed here. And they picked out the design. Uh, the location has been approved by the Park and Rec Commission as well as the uh, design of it. So um, it's been in the works for the last couple of years. Um, it, now we're going through the approval process. We have the monies in place. Mm -hmm. um, so that $75,000 that was in the capital improvement budget is now mm -hmm. 15 that was approved at the last, in the last mm -hmm. budget. So we had a total of $75,000 raised for the project, 15 of it being town money, 60 of it being these Organizations. Would you prefer I ask my questions at the I, end? No, you when, can go ahead. I'll, okay. I, I, there was, okay, we have these organizations who contributed money. What about the taxpayers? Were they sent anything to help with the design, or is it just small group design? Uh, it was a committee. Uh, formed the committee. Who was on the committee? What? Sure. So we had Park and Rec. For, uh, Park and Rec. Right, myself, Mr. Nickerson. Okay. Um, I'm going to read them off to you. Esther Williams from the Rotary Club. Donna Gaeta from the Rotary. John Hoy from the Public Trust. Brian Buckley from the Private Trust. Bill Ranowski from the Private Trust. Howard Parkhurst from the Lions Club. Bill Allen from the Lions Club. Pat Larkin from Park and Rec. Mike McDowell from Park and Rec. Myself in the first slide. Okay. A pretty uh, large committee. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I was totally unaware of it. My next question is, and um, <coughs> lived in town a long time, isn't there restrictions on the original purchase of McCook's Point? Specifications, what can be done up there <coughs> by the McCook family? And if it is broken, they get the property, the heirs get the property back. I feel this is not a good thing. Okay, this is outside of that special recreation area, which is 500 feet from the high tide line from here. Mm -hmm. So we are probably 520 feet away from that special recreation area. So that was designed with that in mind. Okay. Um, the boundaries change as the years have gone by. Um, 25 feet, I think that's too close, of the Dell. Because, I mean, growing up here, I've seen the boundaries change, everything. And and I really hope someone checked into it, because 25 feet over that many years uh, could have changed a lot of things. I, I can certainly go Please, because I don't want it to come back to the town. Right and we lose McCook's. Because that was specified in there, I can remember, um, when the town didn't want to buy it. Right. Did you, have you read the deed? No, about my dad had a copy of it because he wanted the town to buy this, sure. and the town opposed it. So um, I think that warrants looking into before sure, you proceed I, I at a special <laughs> hearing anything yeah. I, i'll certainly look into that and i'll get you a copy of the deed the deed <clears> says <throat> we do have to pay uh special attention to and they mention certain things in the deed exactly so there's, a, there's a memorial cross there mm -hmm. that we have to keep there's a cup rock yeah there for the just deed. like the keep. building was supposed to stay up but that was taken down did someone survey this? Mr. Fanner has, yes. There's, it's <coughs> on a survey. He has surveyed the whole. He's our commission chairman now. How, how recent was this survey? I would have to say Ten the last years. seven years, yeah. I, I really would be more comfortable if it was surveyed recently. We've had the bad storms. We've had the boardwalk knocked down. I mean, the focal points, there has been a lot of change. 
and I think we really need to go cautiously on this one because I do know there are really some restrictions and the McCook family is really interested in getting their property back. I've never heard that. Mm-hmm. Uh, heirs. Well, heirs change through the years. Uh, I had heard different um, anecdotes about restrictions on the park and um, what the proposal takes me back to is maybe five or eight years ago when they had concerts during the summer in McCook Park and they used the p pavilion that um, was located kind of on the back of a lot near the train tracks yeah, where so the construction site yeah. was. So the pavilion's right here. Right. <laughs> okay, so our proposed band show is pretty much the 500, mark, uh, the 500 foot mark comes off of the upper restroom right here. Mm -hmm. So this corner is the nearest that we could put a facility in. So if you draw that line here, yeah, I said 25 feet. I, think I can get an updated. Yeah, but there there is a lot of changes even in the seven years when Mr. Fanner surveyed it. Well, I'm, I'm guessing so. I, yeah, or whatever he did because we've had that major <laughs> storm. A lot of things have changed. Uh, I just want to zoom out for an, a moment, uh, orient the commission members with uh, how we're going to um, have this <coughs> have this discussion and the nature of the motion that we're looking for. So, uh, as you're aware, we have a plan of conservation and development. That's a document that gets updated at least every ten years, and it reflects the uh, town's priorities with respect <coughs> to, broadly speaking, conservation and development. Uh, that document contains a series of objectives. So uh, when we, uh, as we talk here, we're going to be crafting a motion which will say something to the effect of uh, we find the application of the town of East Lyme consistent with the plan of conservation and development, or we find the application of the town of East Lyme inconsistent with the plan of conservation and development. And the document provides objectives to kind of focus our attention. So I just wanted to share uh, three of the objectives that we have that I think uh, echo some of Joan's comments. And uh, again, these, this is the language that we would be evaluating application in light of. So objective 4.2 is to preserve the tradition of public access to East Lyme's shoreline while weighing such access <laughs> against the need to protect sensitive shoreline and inland water resources and the rights of property owners. Uh, objective 5.1, to provide park and recreational facilities that meet the diverse needs of residents and visitors of all ages. Objective 6.1, to provide facilities and services for municipal government that meet future needs and maintains the quality and range of municipal, of municipal services and facilities desired by the town's people while maintaining and diversifying the tax base. Um, there's other objectives <coughs> that uh, commission members can feel free to cherry pick if, um, oh, if there's one additional one, objective 3.3 <laughs> is to promote wise use of land in the coastal area which recognizes the importance of the town's coastal resources and existing water dependent uses. Um, so that's just quickly four objectives that I think we can start to weigh uh, this application as being consistent or inconsistent with. Uh, a key word that Joan is touching on is a tradition of public access to East Lime Shoreline. So um, in my lifetime, the park has changed a little bit. Um, maybe I can just ask a, a, a general question. Could you, could you describe how this park, um, the boardwalk, and the circulation has changed over the past maybe 20 years, getting us to today. Well, and we are now one, right. to be honest with you, we are a one and a half mile coastal park. Right. If you start from Crescent Beach and go all the way to down to Cheney Park, and then you're meeting that. So that's been a huge uh, change to the community in the last 20 years. So mm -hmm. we've provided another another beach, you know, 14 acre beach that uh, has been provided to us. And then, so I don't know how that, this falls into the access. Um, it's, it's not gonna block any of our pathways or 
any of those types of things or restrict access in any way? I guess, was that your question? Uh, right. Yeah. But we, it has changed significantly in the last 10 years with the boardwalk, yes. absolutely. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we have 1.1 mile that was added right. you know, to the Park and Rec our management right. responsibility. The, the other projects that come to my mind are the bathhouse at Hole in the Wall and uh, the bathhouse at McCook's, absolutely. which were both, um, um, you know, the hole in the wall parking lot used to be just kind of a dirt no man's mm -hmm. land that's become kind of claimed by the town uh, or, or and nurtured by the town. Um, uh, it served as a great classroom for kids to come and learn about stormwater runoff and exactly you know, mm -hmm. different types of parking uh, area surfaces and that kind of stuff. So that's been great. Yeah. Uh, so what I understand is that there's a fifteen thousand dollars from your budget that. Well, the town's capital budget. Of the town's capital. Right. So the town's stake is 15 grand, but these uh, uh, groups have expressed their interest in seeing the project. Well, they've already donated the 20,000 each. Yeah. And already put it in. What is, what if it doesn't pass? Do they so get the their money back? back? I'm very <laughs> uncomfortable without the survey. I think this is a seasonal, very select group of people. I don't think it's for the Betterman of the town, and I think um, we're going to have a lot of problems, a lot of problems. And again, Can on I a ask you to elaborate on that. Uh, the fact that you're going to have this <coughs> a very select group of people, uh, band <coughs> playing, okay. Uh, you have Which we already have. We do have summer concerts. Every yeah. Year. Okay, but we didn't put up this huge building like this. It, if we already have them, what do we need this for? Well, we want to enhance those opportunities. But that's only a Joan, piece of people. Can I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Can I talk to the technical reasons why this is important? Please. Because that pavilion is doesn't work. You got like four lights. I don't know what kind of amperage you're going to put in here. I'm in theater. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> so I think of electricity. And... You need at least a 200 amp service going into there. I don't know what you're planning. We're exactly, we're bringing four separate circuits down there as well. So for that, so that similar to what we have up by our tent, when we run bands off of there with lights and stuff. So, um, but that's not appropriate either. The tent that we have. No. So why don't you put it further away from the, you know, with a buffer of 25 feet, and do with the old one. And then you don't have to worry about all this being close to the border. I just think it's a waste of taxpayer money. I'm sorry. Seasonal, select group of people, lots of noise. You've got people down there fishing. You have oyster beds now right off of the hole in the wall. Substantial. And... Um, so how would the oyster beds affect the fish? Well, noise, pollution. You know, when people go up there, you know, not everybody is considerate. They throw things in the water. Uh, you know, it's, no. I, if, I, if I can summarize your comment, you're, you perceive an intensification of the use of the park, which at uh, it's For select people. And if I can tie that into our objectives, it, the objective five one is provide park and recreational facilities that meet the diverse needs of residents and visitors of all ages. And so, uh, with respect to this pavilion, it sounds like its primary use will be peak load summertime venue. Sure, I would think spring, summer, fall, absolutely. And then, you know, not only concerts, we can do theaters there. You could run Shakespeare's in the park type of things and movies. We do. We do movies, we set our movie screen up there, and we have that, the way this land is laid out has become a natural amphitheater with a gen gentle slope of the hill mm -hmm. coming from up top down. So, you know, I mean, we call it a band shell, but you could do, I would think it'd be great to have a, a summer play there, um, to have our, show our movies there as well. We have a big inflatable screen that we can put up there. I've all seen the, sound, the screen. It's yeah, good. and all the sound would go out over Long Island Sound. That's the reason why it's pointed the way it is, so it doesn't affect anything. Uh, so in the context of the changes over the past um, generation or so, uh, shoreline access, um, we, we've 
recently completed the boardwalk and built the bathhouses. We're waiting for permanent uh, bathhouses at Cheney. Pre presently, it's porta potties. Um, the bathhouses that are have been built are those year round. No. What are when we, are those closed? Yeah, we close those right around the first of December, <coughs> and then we open them up again around mid March, early April, depending on the weather. So those are not winter. Right. So um, if I can um, try to express the my understanding of the diverse needs of residents and visitors of all ages, uh, similar to how Joan categorized the seasonal and the year round. Um, <coughs> presently, the bathrooms are closed during the winter. And a lot of people I know uh, can't bring their dogs to the park anymore in the summer. Right. So the winter time is their time to use the <coughs> park with the dogs. Well, we, yeah, from Labor Day, from Labor Day through Memorial Day, you can have a dog in our parks. Right. Right. So there's a state regulation that says that any <coughs> designated swim area and the adjacent land to it, you can't have domestic animals. So we have that posted. I've seen that parks. that yeah. regulation, and it's uh, to me it's unfortunate that the um, <coughs> the kind of land that we have uh, is bottlenecked by the railroads. So you have to move, you have to circulate close to the swim area <coughs> to get your dog in, and at that choke <coughs> at that choke point, um, that triggers the statute. Right. That's the way. Yes. And the way so we interpret it. So, um, br broadly speaking, with Park and Rec, I've heard feedback. <coughs> uh, you know, why aren't isn't there any place for dogs during the swim season downtown? Is there any um, other projects with that are either on capital improvements or in committee with Parks and Rec that are going to be in the next few years addressing maybe some of the off-peak year-round access to shoreline issues? As far as dogs are concerned? As far as anything, like, uh, I'm sure, I don't think the commission members <coughs> were aware of the capital improvements. Is there other things going on after this in there, sequence? There is a committee set up by Mr. Nickerson that looked for a dog park. Right. And so he is, he's taken that and run with that. So I, I really, I know a little bit of information okay. about that, but I know he has started, and there is some residents interested in serving on that committee and raising money for a potential dog park. No, I know that that's a fact. Right. Yes. So yeah. that is in the works. I haven't seen it. It hasn't been as a capital improvement item yet, but I would imagine <coughs> that's going to come down the road. They raise a nice amount of money. Are they really? Yes. They have. Well, so as far as seasonal access is, the parks and greenery <coughs> open all year, year round. Right. So we're not, we don't eliminate any. Dave, may I ask one question? Yeah, uh, since the parks are open all the way, all year round, would would it not be feasible for the town to allow at least one spot for there to be a bathroom all year round? Sure, we could look at that. I mean, we'd have to put some space heaters, and then you're talking additional money. You know what? I don't know about if you need to put space heaters up because you really. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> well, you we're going to have to heat those to keep them from the pipes freezing. <laughs> really? Because we're talking a big cost then to replace that. So we are talking about putting some space heaters in there to be able to heat that, heat one of those facilities. I, I just think that one facility, you know, probably near, I would say more than, than anything else, the one that would be near McCook's Park, because that's the one that really is used more often, only because of the fact that the, the boardwalk that we now have available to us, right. and it would just make it a lot easier for the people that have gray hair. Yeah, I, I, mean, <laughs> I understand you're talking, you know, financially, we have to heat it, and then we have to close it and staff it and clean it. Right. 